All right, making his long overdue debut on Inside TBT, Jacob Pullen, welcome to the show. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot for having me. Absolutely. I got a couple questions right off the bat. First and foremost, you got to talk to me a little bit about the change that you're rocking. What do we got going right there? Oh, man. Uh, one of them is just like a neighborhood thing. I'm growing up. My, uh, my brothers used to always say it. Everybody not loyal, just something that, that just stuck with me since I was younger to make sure I keep my circle small. And the other one, just the pools chain, man. Just just say my name. That's all. I love it. I love it. So obviously it's a great time to talk to you right now because it's March. It's March Madness. You come back every year, you know, hopefully moving forward for TBT. But you made a name for yourself and made some noise in college and in March. So first and foremost, how excited are you to get to watch some March Madness this year? Man, I love it, man. That's my favorite time of the year. Uh, I usually, uh, in my suite out here in Kuwait, I got like four TVs in my room, man. So I'm going to have games playing on every TV probably. Like, it's the best time of the year for me. Basketball is it's the most authentic basketball that you can get to me. It's the most pure basketball. You know, people are playing one game at a time, and everything is about matchups, not about who ranked where, who did what. You can play a team that's, that you never thought you would lose to, and they can come out and, and, and give you everything that you wasn't ready for and send you home and end your season. So March Madness is so unpredictable, and it's such a, such a fun time. So I, I always enjoy watching it. And how about your boys in purple and black? You thinking they could make a deep, deep run this year? I honestly do. I like the I like the bracket we're in. I think uh, I think Providence is a scary team on that side. I think because you know I'm a big fan of Ed Cooley and and his coaching style and his staff. He recruited me when I was in high school and he was at Fairfield and he got a Chicago kid, Bryce Hopkins there. So I'm a big fan of Providence. I watched them play a lot this year. They're a tough team, and you know, but like I say, in the NCAA tournament, it doesn't really matter what the rankings and stuff are now. Now it's just about matchups and who really wants to not end their season and who's going to play the hardest, who's going to make sacrifices, who's going to do the things to get to that next game. So, you know, I think the, the side that K-State is on is is a tough, tough bracket, but I think that they can get through. Uh, if they get past the first two rounds of the first, uh, the first game in either Providence or Kentucky, I think that getting to the final four, they'll probably have to go through Duke or somebody, and that will be a great game. As you were getting ready for March Madness, I think you went all four years that you were at K State. No, nah, my, my sophomore year I didn't go. I went to the NIT. All right, so so three of four. What what was your mindset? You know, a few days the night before that that first game. Uh, it was more so my freshman year. I didn't really understand it. But we were so hyped up because we were playing O.J. Mayo and, you know, Bill had the thing with O.J. Mike wanted to show that he was the best freshman ever. So, you know, I was young and just riding a roller coaster at that point. But by my junior and senior year, it was more so of me trying to get everybody to understand that it doesn't matter who we're playing. We can play North Texas or we can play Texas. You know, it doesn't matter. Every team now is is one game away from their season being over with. And that was the biggest thing I always try to get my guys to realize, like, you know, we can't take anything for granted. We can't come out thinking, oh, we're the better team. No, because somebody will come out and punch you in the mouth and that game will be over with. Do you have a specific March Madness moment? You know, we posted your your game against Jimmer you know, a few days ago on the TBT page. But do you have a game or moment that really sticks with you from your, your time at K-State in the tournament? Uh, my junior year, that run was really sweet. You know, we we got to match up with, with some really good teams. I think um, that Jimmer matchup was really fun because it was a lot of hype on Jimmer and a, a lot of – he had played really well all season. And, you know, for me, a lot of people always talk about my offense, but defensively my junior and senior year, I really got after it and I really felt like I was the best defender in the country for real on ball. Like I felt like any, I can guard anybody and I can take the ball from anybody. So, you know, I really harped on defense that matchup. And when we started that game against Jimmer and then we were down like 10, zero, 11, zero, but Frank didn't start me on Jimmer. And I remember that time I came in the huddle and I said, I have Jimmer now. Like it's not a discussion. It's not matchups. I, I'm guarding him now. And the momentum kind of changed after that, but that Xavier game probably was, my favorite game ever, you know, that game was just an amazing game. And Jordan Crawford and two Holloway just played amazing. Jamel McLean, Jason Love, like that Xavier team was a really good team. And we had played them early in the year, so we knew what to expect. But we didn't think that they were going to be 
as developed as they were. They grew. The first time we played them, they didn't play together as a team as much. But that second game in the tournament, they just – they matched everything. You know, Clemente and two went at it. Me and Jordan went at it. Our big guys went at it. Like, it was just – it was overall great matchup and probably one of the best NCAA tournament games that I've, that I've ever been a part of and that I've seen just watching games over the last 10 to 15 years. So then you get to your, your senior year. This might be a – a difficult memory for you, but the game against Wisconsin, when you dropped 38 in, in a loss, your was that your last game? Yeah, my last college game. So how long after that game did it take you to be like, holy shit, I just dropped 38 on national TV in a college game in March Madison? Uh-huh. Did you never get that to, get to that point? It, I, it took me a long time, honestly. I didn't watch that game again until probably like my third year pro. I think my brother sent it to me. I was like, man, you really was going crazy, man. He was like, everything just was going. He was like, you must have been in a zone like no other time. And I told him, I was like, you know, in my mind, all I was thinking is I don't want to go home. And I actually was sick leading up until that game, the game before we played Utah State. And I had got a fever or a flu or something. I was really sick. And I remember being on IVs and stuff. And I just remember telling Frank, I'm going to play. I don't care. Like, they're going to have to take me to the hospital for me not to play. And that Wisconsin game, you know, Wisconsin, uh, as I say this all the time to people, that's the one school that I can honestly say I hate with all my heart. And it's not because of anything but them beating me. My freshman year, they beat us, me, Mike, and Bill. And I thought that if we would have got past them, we would have made a good run that year. And my senior year, I was really on a road to redemption. I felt like we was going to play Wisconsin. Then the next game, we was going to get Butler. And then the next game, we were going to get um, Duke, I think. So in my mind, I'm thinking I can get every team that didn't really beat me over the course of my career, and I can come and I can just dominate. I Honestly, in my mind, I saw myself having the, the senior year tournament that Kimba had. I was like, I'm going to put up 35, 38 every night if I have to to win the game. But Wisconsin being a good team that they were, they found a way to just, you know, I, I Jordan Taylor got, got a hand on one of my shots at the end of that game to tie the game. But before that, we just made so many small mistakes that my team didn't make a lot towards the end of that season. And like I say, the tournament, you can't do that. You can't have those small mental lapses because a good team is going to punish you. And Wisconsin was a good team that year. Obviously, the environments during March Madness are great, but it's a little it's a little mix. You got a combination of the two teams and then you throw in just some people who live in the city. I got to talk uh-huh. to you about some K-State home games. Is there a game where the atmosphere just sticks out to you more than any other? Uh, My junior year, we really had that place rocking. Like I said, my my freshman year when we beat Kansas to end the streak and, you know, Mike had talked all of that stuff before the season about how we would beat Kansas in Manhattan and Africa and everywhere else. It was a lot of pressure on that game. And when we won, it was like a, a relief because the fans felt like, you know, the, we had got over the hump, but my junior year, we would have that place 13, five standing room only. And it would be so loud. I remember we played um, Washington state and Clay Thompson. Them, and I remember we had went on like a nine, nine or 10 Oh run. And I remember the coach kept trying to call timeout, but the referees couldn't hear him. And the place was just going so crazy that they were still, we were still playing, but the referees had started blowing a whistle and we couldn't hear. So we were still trapping clay and like trying to steal the ball. And he's looking at us like, man, it's a timeout. Like, leave me alone. Like, let me breathe. So like the, the atmosphere that we had my junior and senior year, when we jumped into the rankings and we were going on, when we went on a good win streak, like it was just different. And, And these guys now, Tang has brought that back. When I went to go see them play against Texas this year and watching the games against KU and all these other games, man, it's it's electric again. And that's like the best thing ever, man, because the fans in, in Manhattan, Kansas, they're like, they're really ride or die. And they'll you could if you show that you're playing with all your heart, you could lose five, six games, and they're still gonna come out every night because they believe in that team now. They believe that you're giving it your all, so they're gonna come out supporting that. And that's why I always would love, you know, the fans in Manhattan. I think Tang said this year, he was like, we get one court storm and then never expect to storm the court again because we're going to be the favorite in every game moving forward. And I love it. I love that. I love that mindset. I love that thought process because, you know, it, it's, it should become the norm now. You know, when we did it, it was new to the, to the, to the place and to Manhattan because they hadn't had a winning team in a while. But now 
you know, it should be the norm now. And, and I believe in Tank. I believe that this is the norm. Like, we're going to win. We're going to beat the, the Texases, the Kansas. We're going we're gonna to compete for the Big 12 championship every year as long as he's there because he's going to get guys to buy in like he did. You know, this year he started to see – I remember talking about Tang at the TBT. Uh, I asked some questions to ask after we won a game, and I told him, I said, he could be the guy that's like Frank and revives this whole thing again. He could change everything to how it was and, and get everybody behind. And he's done exactly what I said, and, I, and I'm just happy that – that I saw it as as it was happening. Great transition into TBT because I got to hit you with some TBT questions. This is a TBT podcast. So that moment sure. this year, you had 30 points. You returned to TBT. You hit the crazy deep game-winning Elam ending three. I mean, where does that rank for you on all-time shots? Man, it's, it, it ranks pretty high, man. It was fun. You know, like I said, it was – that atmosphere, seeing all of that purple in the crowd again, like, you know, the energy. And the crazy part about it is, is the second half was going, I was I was getting tired and I was missing some shots. So I, I didn't play great in the second half. But at that moment, as I'm knowing that we only need three points. I'm not turning down that shot. So I'm hunting it for real. And for them to both leave me, I was thinking to myself, like, you want me to win? So, you know, like, like I said, that shot, you know, the emotions got the flaring again and everybody's screaming again. That's why I was like, man, let me go in the crowd and celebrate. Like, the fans is here again. It, it felt like college. It, it really did. It felt like jumping in the crowd after we beat Texas and they were number one. And, like, you know, it, it really felt like I was back in Manhattan. Speaking of being back in Manhattan, let's hear the pitch right now. Why should TBT come to Manhattan? Ooh, you know, if TBT came to Manhattan – I think that they, I think that they would be surprised how big of a, a crowd they would get if we was to get into the Bramlage Coliseum. Especially if if we get the team that possibly could come back. You know, we get the Barry Browns, like we get the real alumni guys that's not playing in the NBA right now. The Wesley uh, Wandus, Barry Brown, Kamar Stokes, Beasley, Bill. Like we get all of these guys to show up. And we get a, a good alumni team with some extra guys that that really can help us play, so we won't be shorthanded. Because you know it, it's tough playing in the TBT that people don't understand that you got to play back to backs, and if you don't have a good enough roster with a, a enough depth, it's hard to continue to go at that high pace because you're playing you're not playing bad teams. You're playing pros the most likely on every team. Guys coming from different schools, different countries, coming back home to play. So you need a good roster and. If we had or the roster that I think we could put together, man, Manhattan, would they would sell out. You would get 13-5 in Bramlage. <laughs> there you go. Michael Beasley, crazy teammate. He he's, <clears throat> seems like a crazy dude, but an awesome dude. You know, I'm going to go ahead and make an assumption. He's a good friend, good guy. you got to have a great Michael Beasley story, you know, in your pocket. I got some great Michael Beasley stories, man. That's my guy, man. He was – one of the main reasons that I went to K-State, you know, we had met over the summer and and playing AAU and stuff. And I'll tell you one story when we were freshmen, man, one of my favorite stories. So um, we were practicing and, you know, sometimes Mike and Bill wouldn't be engaged in practice. You know, freshmen, they're better. You know, they, they would sometimes be lack of day school. So towards the middle of the season, Frank would make it a purpose to put them on separate teams to get them riled up because, you know, playing against the competition, something's going to happen. It's going to get you riled up. So we were doing a drill. I want to say it was four on four. And um, Mike dunked on Bill so bad. It was like he caught him, like, in the air, and they went body to body, and he screamed his name like, Mike. And he just dunked the ball so hard. And the rest of practice, Mike just – Mike must have scored 150 points the rest of practice, and he called them all out because he was just so mad. And, and at that point, I was like, man, this is the best player I think I've ever played with or seen. Like, he scored it all – literally from that point in practice to the rest of practice, every time he scored, he was looking for Bill. And he just wanted to score on Bill to get, show him, like, I'm that good. And I, I, I would say that he counted out probably 150, 160 points. He counted out every bucket for the rest of practice. Like, six – Nine, that's a three, and one, that's 12. Two-pointer, that's 14. Jump hook, 16. Like, he counted them out in every drill for the rest of practice. And that, like I said, after that, I was like, yeah, this guy's pretty amazing. <laughs> this guy's probably – this is the number one pick in the draft for me. Have you ever talked to Frank about that moment? Oh, well, I mean, I talked to Frank a lot about, about those days and, and that stuff. And Frank used to say he would do it on purpose. He would say it all the time. Like, you know, I would – he would find ways to try to – 
get our get our engines going, whether it was him screaming at me for something that I had nothing to do with or him just putting them two on separate teams. Frank, at that point, he was really – he was playing puppet master to try to get us to go every day because, you know, we're freshmen and we didn't understand how serious it was at times, but Frank knew. So that's why I say Frank, Frank, Mike, Bill, like that team, we – we were young, but it really set the stage for everything to come in the future. And I got, that's my guy. Those are my guys for life because of that. All right. I got a couple quick hitter questions before I get you out of here. Uh, First one, besides Mike, and this can be, you know, summer league, NBA, all over the world. Best teammate you ever played with? Best teammate I ever played with besides Michael Beasley. Player wise. <laughs> Not like, oh, this guy found me so well or he picked me up. Like, just pure. Nah, like, the best player, best pure player I played with. My um third year in Europe, I played with a guy named Juan Carlos Navarro. He's probably, they call him uh, La Bamba. He's probably the best guard I've ever seen in, in, like, that's not in the NBA. Like, he, the way that he could score and, and get what he wanted. And he actually started that one foot shot, too. I shoot it sometimes, but going left. He would always shoot it off one foot. He never missed it in practice. Like if you go look him up, he had like a 30 ball against the Lakers in summers and in a uh, preseason and stuff. Like he was really the most talented floater was amazing. He really helped me with my floater. Like he was probably the best guard I've seen in my European career because he just could dominate. And he was so efficient and such a great shooter. Like he was really one of the, and in practice, he used to wear me out. He used to wear me out and I would be chasing him. And he would tell me like, I'm going right. He would go left and shoot a one footer. He like I'm going left, go right and shoot a floater. So he was probably the the best player that I played with in my professional career. All right, that's a fantastic answer. Next question: I asked John Elmore this question the other day, so I want to see mm-hmm. what you think. Jacob Pullen is on K State right now. How many points are you averaging in the tournament? Well, the way that basketball is set up right now, I'm probably averaging about 27 to 28 points, possibly 30 points, because you know it's it's way more freer, it's more it's more up tempo, more way more three point shots, and I shot a lot of three point shots at that time in college. I was shooting about five or six a game. So with the way that they play basketball now, I probably could get eight to nine to ten a game, which is definitely up in my scoring and and definitely up in me getting to the free throw line. So. I, I easily say I get to about 27 a night if I was playing in college basketball right now. And that's no disrespect to the guys in college because, I, I, like I say, I love to watch them play. I enjoy it. But I just think that my IQ and my ability to score with the way that they play basketball now, it would be a, a sight to see for me. It would be my eyes will light up on a, on a nightly basis with my coach telling me, take transition threes. It's okay. <laughs> All right, last question. You know, We'll use Blue Collar U as an example, the team that won TBT last year. Is the TBT champ, Blue Collar U, the no doubt favorite winner of March Madness if they were inserted into, you know, the 64 yeah, team? I mean, it's, it's tough because they're professionals and a lot of those or a lot of those guys are grown men. So it's all it's tough to say, say that a plan against college guys, which now you have a lot of older college guys because of the Kobe year and stuff like that. But, you know, if you put them in a tournament, I believe that with their chemistry and the way they played last year, they could definitely be a favorite to win. Now, at the same time, you got some really good teams in college, man. So it would be hard to just say. The NCAA tournament is so unpredictable. You never know who could win. Like, uh, with Kansas winning last year, you can't say that Kansas is going to win this year. Like, it's just really tough to say with the NCAA tournament because the seed ends, everything matters. Matchups. Uh, the area you're playing in matters because somebody could be a 10 seed and play in their city and have a home crowd. And now it doesn't feel like you're the three seed. It feels like you're on a road game. So, you know, everything plays a factor when it comes into the NCAA tournament. But I do think that that blue collar team that won last year played really good basketball and they played really unselfish. And that was part of the reason why they were able to go and win the TBT. All right. Last thing. This is how we wrap up episodes at Inside TBT. Do you have any questions for me? Man, the only question I got for you guys is where is the finals of the TBT going to be? Because if we get our team together, I want to get hotels there early because I might have, I want to bring some family and stuff. Ooh, so so that- we get the right team together, I want to know where the finals going to be so I can get some hotels early and send my family out there. I got to tell you, I've gotten so many questions on the show, and that was one of the coolest questions ever asked. However, I cannot reveal that information to the public. I can reveal it to you. 
potentially off the record, but on the record, okay. we cannot answer that. Okay, we'll we'll talk then. We'll text or DM, and you can let me know. But if I get the team together, that we possibly think we get the team together, and the time permits, you know, and everything is is in place, I think that we can have a good team. It might not be all K State guys. We might have some added professionals in there. But that's what you need to win these type of tournaments, man. This is a money tournament, you know. When Syracuse won, they had Keeper Sykes and Tyrese Rice. And I know those guys didn't go to Syracuse. You got to get La Bamba. Or what did you say the guys think they man, were? Uh, Barro, he retired, man. He's the GM of Barcelona now. If he was still playing, I would definitely ask him to come play with you, man. That's my guy. I would. But now, like I said, now I need bees. I need guys that, you know, that can really do with the West and Juan dudes, the Barry Browns, the young guys from K-State. If I can get those guys, I mean – Marquise and Marquise and uh, Cavante will be done after this season. They possibly could play this summer. I, I might just be the uh, sixth man if I can get all of these guys to come play. Well, there you go. Jacob Poland, this has been great. Good luck to you the rest of the season. We didn't even talk about where you're playing. You real quick want to highlight that? Man, I'm, I'm, I've been playing in Kuwait this season. First time in the Middle East, and it's been, a, it's been amazing, man. Great weather. Great place to be. Just really relaxing, and you know the, the competition isn't is the same as the high European level, but the money's on time, and I can't complain. There you go, Jacob Poland. No complaints from you. Hope to see you back in TPT this summer. Appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate it, man. No problem at all. Clocking out early. That's the dish I don't like. Been getting paid since I was riding on the bike. Hit the pedal with the eighth. Hopping on the ninth flight. I've been chilling. I'll be at the bar tonight Told the bartender go and take my car to swipe You try the same thing but your car get declined White rappers nowadays know we're not too hard to find I'm so dapper with my ways, I'm gonna linger in your mind Always told me good things, look I'm too dull to our patient But I've been way too patient, riding bars in my basement I'm anxious in the real world, it's time for me to say this The basics, the talent in my mind, I can't waste it My life is too safe, it's my time for it's taking I'm baking my mind every day the same ish lazy my grind needs to get a new facelift coming from the underground and busting through the pavement rock with it and lean with it my team win it my team win it now rock with it and lean with it my team turn up when i spit it now rock with it and lean with it my team win it my team win it now rock Said that I will be more because oh yeah that it's so raving Racing and pacing around all these lames in my lane Out my way unless you're trying to pay me Not from the playpen, it's coming from the jungle When you hear the bell you better be ready to rumble Because I'ma grab the gloves and I'm gonna flex my muscles Go ahead and spit some bars but you're probably just gonna mumble A lot of rappers these days really need to get them humble Cause they think they at the top they better stop before they stumble Cause I'm swiping all their biddies while they swiping right up mumble And your girl but she only calls you uncle But no, we not related, homie No, we not some fam You never get in clubs You can't even get in sand You never get in dubs Like the Browns from the land When push comes to shove Wave that towel in your hand 